We were talking about Brock Vandegrift, and we're going to continue to talk about Brock Vandegrift because he is the number one overall recruit according to Rivals rankings that just dropped on Tuesday. How that affects the 247 composite, we'll see. Not just top 247, but ESPN's rankings have don't have him as the number one overall recruit. But you know what? Everybody had him as a five-star quarterback. So there it is. Now, again, 2021, it's a long way from now, right? If early signing period, that's December 2021. So you got a long way to go. But the thing that I think you need to remember about quarterbacks and when they commit is those dudes don't flip. You know, we're talking about them moving in the transfer portal is one thing. But talking about the high school kids and just what they're able to do is something else entirely. And also, now you have a guy in the boat that would be another high school kid that Lincoln Riley was very high on, that was very high on Lincoln Riley that has an opportunity to develop. So Lincoln Riley gets to answer this question down the line about later, can he develop Spencer Rattler? Can he develop Tanner Mordecai? Can he develop Brock Vandegrift if he signs? But, Patrick, we were talking about this. You were like, hey, I— I don't see any reason to believe that this guy would ever flip his commitment. Now, he's announced it like an hour ago, so he's not interested in flipping anything right now. But, I mean, that was the point you were making. Yeah, I think if, if you look at it long term, your high-level guys, which he, which he is, tend not to flip. I mean, unless something drastic was to happen, uh, Lincoln Riley leaves, whatnot. But generally, a guy of that level, he commits, he stays, and he becomes a, a, an 11th recruiter, I guess, if you will. Uh, working on that class, but because uh, typically there's nowhere for them to go, especially to a program like Oklahoma. Most of your other high-level programs are already going to have their quarterback, so for a guy to flip and go somewhere else, there, there's generally not room. Uh, and also, too, as as I look at it, I see more maybe your three-star guys or your lower four-star guys. They might flip if a bigger school who didn't get a quarterback comes in on them late. Uh, right. So that, you see that happen. Which, look, oh, you might do that to somebody in the 2020 cycle, you know, because they don't have a, a, a quarterback committed yet. So I think that's where you might see uh, a quarterback flipping. But, yeah, your high level, your five-star guys going to high-level programs, don't. I, I just don't see a, a reason for him to flip and a place for him to go. Not that no one would want him, but, you know, Alabama, Georgia, other big schools probably already have their quarterback at that point. Now, you always have a place to go if you're a five-star yeah, yeah, quarterback, yeah. right? You, you always do. I mean, he's not going to Tulane. I mean, so. <laughs> Shout out to, to the Tulane listeners out there. No, I mean, look. I look at it this way. I look at it in that we're always asking who the leader of a class is as classes are being formed because that leader needs to be the guy that rounds up the posse that's already there and is also the person that they can all congregate around and actually help you go recruit, right? Because the one of the leaders of the 2019 class is Trajan Bridges. Like he had a he had a heavy hand in Theo Weiss coming back into the fold and getting Jaden Hazelwood to come into the fold and having Lincoln uh, having, having Lincoln right having Spencer Rattler already there and being able to say, "Have you guys seen this guy's tape? We know that he's in Arizona and we know that we're in Texas, but have you seen him?" And then they got to come together at the opening last year, and that was a big deal because they had all said, we want to play together, and then they ended up playing together. And they ended up playing with 2020 run running back, or 2020 running back Jace McClellan, who is still in the 2020 class today, right? I think all of this is great from the cohesion standpoint of this because one of the things that gets undersold and understated is as the class is being formed, you'll see group techs start to get bigger. You know, I'm sure Brock Vandergriff and Cody Jackson – who are the only two guys in the 2021 class right now, are going to start talking. And because they start talking, they're going to take a look at who the coaches want, who they want to play with, and they're going to go try to get those guys. I mean, Jace McClellan was trying to recruit Seth McGowan to the 2020 class, and you end up with Seth McGowan in the 2020 class. So, if I mean, yes, the metrics, right? You know that the kid's six foot three. You know he's 200 pounds. You know that he threw for 3,000 yards as a sophomore. And you know that he rushed for another thousand and 23 touchdowns on the ground and I can go deep on he's really good when the pocket breaks down now the stat works like this this is data this is data in football and I love this quarterbacks are they reduce their passer rating by about 70 percent in the NFL by 30 percent 270 in the NFL when the pocket is clean but they operate from a clean pocket 70% of the time when they drop back, right? So a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, 
who might not be that mobile, also is able to find guys downfield and make all the throws when the pocket is clean. But what does he do when the pocket breaks down? That is where I think you can see a separation in good quarterbacks to elite quarterbacks. Kyler Murray, excellent when the pocket is breaking down. He runs to throw. Pat Mahomes, excellent when the pocket is breaking down. He runs to throw. Baker Mayfield, excellent when the pocket is breaking down. He runs to throw. And Brock Vandergriff, his huddle film shows a guy that is excellent when the pocket breaks down because he's running to throw. And I keep saying running to throw because there are quarterbacks who want to tuck it and go. And I don't begrudge them that. If that's what you're good at, do what you're good at. But it does take a special kind of moxie, let alone confidence, to run and find where your receivers are when you have monsters trying to destroy your spleen. And I think that's another thing you're getting in Brock Vandergriff is the guy who is unafraid of rush and he's unafraid of the challenge of what it means to be a quarterback in this day at Oklahoma. I find that to be the, one of the most endearing things about him. Like, I even asked him a question about, you know, what's he into besides football? Because I believe that you can tell a lot about an athlete by what his hobbies are. And if your hobby is just playing football, I have I have my suspicions about how much this means to you and how good you are as a person and what you're going to do when adversity actually does hit you. And Brock Vandergriff said, I like to hunt and fish, man. And I asked him, you know, I was joking, but I asked him, do you noodle? And the kiddo says, uh, heck no, sir. I don't. And sir, that was the other part about this. You'd be amazed. I'm, I'm 31. You're I'm, a sir now. I'm, right? I'm a, I'm a child. I'm a child. But, I'm, you know, I'm a yes, sir, no, sir kind of person. Right? I've been one for a very long time, especially if there's gray in your hair. I can't help it. And apparently neither can Brock Vandergriff. He was sure of himself. He knew who he was. He knew what he wanted to do. He knew when he would make a decision. He doesn't like all the rigmarole and the blustery talk and the chase me down and show me some love. That's not who he is. And I think that he means he fits right in with the folks in Oklahoma. You know, one of the things that I know to be true about us is, you know, we, we, we talk about the Chinese proverb, the nail that sticks up gets hammered, right? We want you to be humble about it. We don't want you to out here gloating about it. We know you're good. And if you're good, it'll show up. Good players will play great. We don't need you to talk about it. And I think that's another thing to be excited about with a kid and again, is a rising junior, 16, 17 years old here. Now, you could talk about, you know, that he's a year or two away from being a legal adult, but think about what you were doing when you were 16, 17 years old. Now he has all of this on top of him. He is the number one overall recruit according to rivals. He is a five-star quarterback according to everybody. He is going to be heavily sought after, and his the people that want to interview him, the people that are going to want to talk to him just because he has that ranking above his head, that's going to get to be huge, and we're going to get to see how he deals with that in real time, especially in this age of what we call social media, where everybody has an opinion. Lots of people will tell you your opinion. They will tell you how much you suck or you don't suck, and some of that is can affect you. And I'm always going, yo, let the kids be kids. Remind yourself that they're children, even the ones that are 22-year-olds in college, burgeoning adults. Some of them are just learning what it means to pay a utility bill, just learning what it means to pay the electric bill on time, just learning what it means to pay rent, and some of them never learned that, right? And I think that in Lincoln Riley picking his quarterback, he cannot just pick a great athlete. He can't just pick a great passer. He can't just pick a great quarterback. He has to pick a great person because he got it wrong one time with Chris Robinson, and he cut him. And I thought that was huge. That told us a lot about what Lincoln Riley values. And when you hear him talk about his position at Oklahoma, you hear him talk about it with reverence. You hear him talk about what it means to, our, to, to, to the fans that follow him. He tweeted out the eyes earlier today, saying big day. A couple hours later, here comes Brock Vandergriff. So he also gets us in the age of the internet. And I think all of that is of a piece. All of that leads you to landing a guy like Brock Vandergriff, and all of that leads you toward what is ultimately the prize here, which is winning championships. And as many people will say, it ain't the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy and Joe's. Okay, well, now you got a Joe. Now you got a guy. He he is what you want, and there isn't a better quarterback to date in the class of 2021.